Hey, and welcome to our new series where together we're going to learn how to automate our indoor gardens with a free program called Home Assistant and a whole variety of different devices and sensors. If you haven't already seen the two videos that I made about my automated garden, check them out and you'll get an idea of some of the things that you can do with Home Assistant. The sky is the limit really and it's up to you to make it as simple or complex as you like. To be clear right from the get-go, if computers aren't your thing, you're probably going to struggle with this and it may not be for you. I'm not exactly like a computer whiz, but I do know my way around Windows, and I know a little bit about networking, and I think these skills are sort of the minimum requirement to work with Home Assistant. If you have a decent understanding of these things, I'm certainly happy to help if you get stuck, but if you don't know what an IP address is, then you've got some homework to do before you get started. Alright, moving on. Some of the topics I intend to cover will be things like how to bring temperature and humidity readings into Home Assistant wirelessly and use this data to control things like humidifiers and fans. We can also look at remotely dimming lights with PWM, how to monitor and dose pH in your system, how to schedule your lights and keep track of your grow, and more, all from your computer or your phone, whether you're at home or out and about. My goal for this series is to create a Home Assistant community within our indoor growing niche and make this accessible to as many people as possible by keeping it simple and trying to provide budget-friendly solutions whenever possible. I've been using Home Assistant for a couple of years now and I have a few buddies who are way down the rabbit hole and we chat about our systems every single day, though they're more on the home automation side of things. I'd love to build a community of people who grow, like myself, to see what kind of automations we can come up with together and improve the quality of everybody's garden. I feel like I've got a fairly decent handle on this program after working with it for a couple years, but I'm pretty new to programming in and of itself, and luckily you don't really need to know any to work with Home Assistant. There are scenarios where writing a little chunk of code might make things easier, but we're going to try to do this without relying on writing code as much as possible because even I'm going to need some help if it does come to that. I also invite anyone who has a better way to do what I'm doing to let me know because I'd much rather do it the right way than possibly lead people astray. So programmers and home assistant experts out there, please feel free to share any suggestions or corrections that you might have. Also, if you come up with some really cool idea that you'd like to try to implement, then please share it and maybe we can work together to try and get it going and share it with everybody else if it's successful. While Home Assistant is getting easier and easier to use, it's not exactly plug and play and I wouldn't consider it simple to work with, so learning it will take some time, but we'll start slow and once you're up and running, you will be amazed at all the different devices you can integrate and all the different things you can do with it. I'll also be sharing all the configuration files I create as I go, so people can copy and paste as much stuff as they please, and I'll do my best to answer as many questions as I can to help people get going. Let me add a quick little disclaimer here. I'm not guaranteeing any of my work or any of my code, so anything that you see and use from this channel, you do so at your own risk, and it's up to you to verify that everything is actually correct and proper. I've created a new forum category dedicated completely to Home Assistant over at ledgardener.com forum, and I ask that anybody looking for help please make an account on the forum and post it in there. I'd really like this to be sort of like the home base for discussion related to Home Assistant for indoor gardening, and it'll make it easier to keep things organized, search for information, and will allow people to post screenshots and images which you can't really do in the YouTube comments. I'll throw a link to the forum down below. Since I recorded my previous videos showing off my Home Assistant garden, I've actually moved my instance off of the Linux server that I was running and onto a Raspberry Pi 4 and it's been working excellently. I first started on a Raspberry Pi 3B and I'm finding that the 4 is running way smoother and this is what I'd recommend everyone starts with. Older models will work fine too. And you might notice they start to slow down a bit after you add a whole lot of automation, scripts, and data. If you're tech savvy, you can also run Home Assistant on a VM or a Linux machine. I've done both and they work great, so if you don't want to buy a Pi and you have an old laptop or a desktop, you can also go this route. I'm going to be basing this series off of a Raspberry Pi 4 though. If you want to take your grow to the next level, then give this a try and I'll bet you'll never look back. This is a 5 month old Carolina Reaper plant that I've grown right from seed using my automated garden and it is without a doubt the absolute best pepper plant I've ever grown. And I can just about guarantee that this will translate to whatever type of plant you're growing. Once you've managed to successfully automate the majority of your menial gardening tasks, it's kind of like having a magical little garden elf that just lives to tend to your plants and watch over them 24-7. So, that's my big sell, even though I'm, I'm not really selling anything here. And for the rest of the video, I'm going to give you an overview of what Home Assistant is and how a few things work. So here's my general overview, and don't worry, I'm going to go over this all in detail when we actually get started. This is just to give you a general idea of what's involved. 
All we've got to do to get up and running is flash a micro SD card with the Home Assistant image, then slap this SD card into our Pi, plug the Pi into our home network, and then use our computer to set it up and do all the config. Once the SD card is in, you can literally just plant your Pi right beside your router, plug it in, and leave it there. We will not be hooking up a monitor to it or hooking up any sensors or devices to it. The sole purpose of the Pi will be just to run the Home Assistant software and communicate with our devices over the network through the router. This is what the software looks like out of the box. You can customize it however you like to give it a dark theme or whatever you're into. This is your dashboard and this is where we'll be displaying information from our garden as well as where we'll add buttons, sliders, text, and number inputs to allow us to control our system. Essentially what we'll be doing is bringing different devices into this home assistant environment like Wi-Fi controllable switches, climate sensors, or whatever else, and then tying them to other devices or entities along with input from us to create different automations. Let me show you a super simple demonstration of what a basic automation looks like. I've got a TP-Link HS105 Wi-Fi controllable outlet, and I know that this thing works with Home Assistant. If you're not sure if something can be easily integrated, just Google it. These things definitely can. These switches need to be configured with an official app called CASA. This is nothing related to Home Assistant, it's just how these TP-Link units need to get set up. Once I get it set up so it's on my home Wi-Fi network, it's ready to be brought into Home Assistant, and I won't need to use the CASA app anymore to control it. I'll go to Configuration integrations, and then find TP-Link. It detects my new plug and a light switch that I'm using elsewhere in the house, and since our dashboard is sort of on easy mode right now, it'll just add it automatically right away. So I just recorded this like a couple minutes ago and I'm voicing it over now, and I'm realizing that I'm turning on and off our master bedroom light full blast to test this, and it's like 312 313 in the morning and my wife is probably wondering what the f is going on so we'll see what comes of this uh, later today not everything is this easy to bring into home assistant there are a lot of things that need to be added into this configuration file using the yaml language writing stuff into this config file in yaml can be sort of tricky but really it just boils down to googling things copying pasting and then modifying it to make it work for you and it, it really isn't that bad all right, where was I? Okay, I have control of my switch now from this toggle right here after adding that integration. And that's cool and all, I can turn it on and off with my mouse here, but I'm gonna want something else to turn this switch on and off, so I'm gonna create an automation. I'll go configuration, then automations, I'll add a new one, skip the almond stuff, and we'll call this test automation. Automations in Home Assistant have three components, triggers, conditions, and actions. Triggers are the things you specify that can start the automation. Conditions are optional, they are conditions that you can add that must be true in order for the automation to move on to the next phase, which is actions, the thing you actually want to get executed. For this example, I could use anything as my trigger. It could be when a certain temperature is reached, or a pH level, or a water level, or to keep this very simple, it could just be triggered by time. So I'll set the time trigger to a few minutes from now. I won't add any conditions, but I could put something in like the day of the week must be Wednesday or the temperature must be above 20 degrees. And if this wasn't true, the automation would stop and the actions below would not happen. And then every time this automation gets triggered, it'll recheck the condition and either continue or fail there. Our action here is going to be to call a service. The service will be switch.turnon and the entity we're turning on will be our Wi-Fi outlet. Done. Now, when the time I specified comes, the automation is triggered and the action of turning the switch on is executed. Now let's add another trigger just for fun. We'll say, if the master bedroom light has been turned on and it's been on for 5 seconds, then turn this switch on. So the way I would do that would be to go down, add a trigger, the type will be state, the entity is going to be the master bedroom light, and we're going to say it's going to the state of on for five seconds. I'll save. And now, if the first trigger or the second trigger happens, this automation is going to start.
So there you go. That's a glimpse at what a very simple automation looks like in Home Assistant. If you're interested, the next video is going to be a step-by-step -step guide on setting up a brand new Raspberry Pi 4 and getting Home Assistant up and running. I've added a link to the Raspberry Pi 4 kit that I'm using down below, as well as that TP-Link Wi-Fi outlet. And hey, if you guys like seeing content like this, do me a little bit of a solid and hit that subscribe button and we'll see you on the next one.